Let's take a look at the timeline. On this slide, we've got different objects. All of the objects are here on the screen. This includes this text box that says animations, also they're listed down here. So if I click on animations text box, that's the one that's highlighted. If I click on number two, it's the one that's got number two in there. It's got number two in there because that's the text I've put in. You see this one here, number four, this appears in the timeline later. And let's explain this timeline. Along the top, you've got seconds. So this shows how long it will last for and when things will appear. So this one here, this object called number four, will appear at two and a half seconds if we previewed it. Let's do that now. So the slide started, there's animations on those objects, and then number four appeared later on. If I moved it here to about a quarter of a second, that's when it would appear. So moving them along changes when they appear. Same with any of these. Now, the location of it on here, as in the ranking, doesn't really matter. However, you see we've got group one, and this is group one here, these objects. If I move this down behind number two, then it actually goes behind number two in its location as well. If I right click on it, and say bring to front, bring to front, it moves it to the top. So that's what this ranking here does. It moves objects to the top or the bottom. Normally though, you don't really need to worry about it unless you do have objects sitting on top of each other. As I say, this is a group. So if I click on this little arrow here, then the grouping is broken down. There's another arrow here because it's an icon with even more elements to it. If I want to ungroup it, I can right click on the object and go to group and ungroup. I can't ungroup it from clicking on here though, so something to note. These icons here, we've got this little eye icon, this means show or hide. So you've got the group, which I've got highlighted. I'll click on the little eye icon and it's disappeared. And if we preview that, you see it's also disappeared from the slide as well. So it's not going to appear at all. Normally, I have everything shown. The only reason I remove some of these elements is if I'm editing the slide and I find that things are just getting in the way. So sometimes I'll remove them just so I can edit an object and then I'll bring them all back in. And you can use this show all or remove all at the top. This lock and unlock, well, this object or any object, I can move it around to wherever I want it to. If I click on lock, so it's got a little padlock icon. I can no longer click it. I can't do anything with it. I cannot select it. Again, useful if I'm trying to edit the objects around it and I keep grabbing it by mistake. I'll just lock it. Again, you don't generally lock these things. It's only when you're editing. So you get the timeline. Now, if you're gonna have a slide that plays automatically and moves on automatically, then this timeline will affect that. So after 10 seconds, this will then move on to the next slide if you had this option chosen. And by going to store view, this is the option. So slide advances automatically. But I very rarely use that function. I have it advanced by user. So the timeline doesn't really matter that much. However, you see all these objects have a little arrow at the end. That's because they're going all the way to the end of the timeline. If a timeline's six seconds or 60 seconds, it doesn't matter. It's always gonna to go to the very end, which means it's gonna stay on the screen at all times. If I right click on it, and I remove the tick that says show until end, you see the arrow's disappeared. Now, move the timeline along. That means that this object will appear and then disappear. So let's just show you that. In fact, I'll do it on another object. So there we go. We'll say this line is going to appear and disappear. Let's preview that just to show it to you. So the objects are coming in. And there you go, one object disappeared. Another object disappeared as well. So that can be useful. If you wanted to make your slide a bit more interactive and just showing kind of animations happening, you know, as someone appears on the screen and a person disappears, that's what it's useful for. 
but again generally speaking you have a show until end timeline just move it along left and right you can also preview it in here so rather going to preview at the top you can preview it here by clicking the play icon you can see it then working along so that's another function you can stop it so again you can preview it with the play icon you can pause it you can stop it sometimes it's quicker to do than it is to preview it though again personally I just like to preview the whole slide but I'll leave it up to you as to what you do and if I were to add another object into here so let's get a shape I'll just add in a shape there you can see that this shape has now been added to the timeline as well and by clicking on it it clicks on it here and in the timeline and works the other way around if you ever moved your timeline by mistake and there you go the way to get it back first of all you need to find it so it'll be somewhere on your screen and then click on that redock button so this little button here will undock it and you can move it out of the way redock it you might find that useful if you're working on a laptop and you're struggling for space uh, though I again just have the timeline always docked in position and that button there removes the timeline entirely and if I've done that the timeline has actually been collapsed it's down the bottom so if you do click on that little arrow by mistake normally you'll be down the bottom there and that's with any of these things so if you've got you know, your triggers bit as well they can all be minimized or collapsed and then reopened again and this area for the timeline can be moved up and down to give you a bit more space if that's what you need.